Yo, we have had 26,000 subscribers added this month. And so that means we've got 26,000 people that may not know exactly what we do. They may think that we just play with snakes or play with possums or play with baby chicks. 26,000 people completely confused. Exactly. <laughs> but this video, you're gonna wanna watch it, especially if you're a homeowner or if you think you ever will be a homeowner. At the end, there's gonna be a special offer if you're in the St. Louis area or any one of our markets, but I'm not gonna say anymore. At the end, there's gonna be a very special offer. Hey, let's go feed the lemurs. Well, great. Do you wanna get out there and adjust your, your lighting? No, we can just go for it. It's so bright today. Whoa, 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 whoa! Whoa, whoa! Woogie, woogie, woogie! I'm everybody's friend now. So you wanna make friends with the lemurs? Bring food. Bring snacks, especially if you got bananas. Is that Elijah? Yeah. You can tell because he has balls. He's the only one that has big balls. 28. I think I know how to waste them. Jeremy's yeah. really good at weighing things out in grams. Well, I figured he might, but I wasn't going to assume. Does this look like 30 grams? So, um... Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Dang! Oh look, it's exactly 30. Wow, that's good, Jeremy. <laughs> you're going to hold, you're going to walk out, hold the glove like this. All right, he's gonna know what the deal is because he'll start looking at you, he'll start doing this number. And then you get close enough to him so that he can reach you on the leash. And you go, hut up, hut up. And he'll jump up on here, he's gonna start looking for it. You just let him have it a little bit and then let him finish eating. And then once he's done and he relaxes, then he'll jump back into his enclosure. What's hut up? All right, hut up. Yeah, what's hut up? Hut up. The command. This is gonna be part of our Teaching Jeremy series. And we're going to be showing Jeremy just some finer points of feeding the animals. So remember, you got to get close enough to him to, to jump. You didn't give him the command. Open, open the glove real quick, let him see what you got, and then close it. Say it again. So one of the things that I do is if they don't come for the reward, I take it away from them. Okay. And then I'll step back in with intent, and so in one motion, I'll go, hut up. It's like, here you go, come and get it. Hut up. Do it again, take it away. Well, now, now you can let him have it. Twist your whole hand right, just your wrist. There you go, gives him a more stable platform. Now he's got to relax. So he needs to understand that there is no more food, so you open your palm, so you can see that there's nothing. Oh, look, you did have, you were holding out on him. Now, when he goes to fly back, he's gonna be a little sticky footed. That means that his right foot's not gonna release. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get him to where he's like, hut up, and like immediately. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause we gotta fly him off a 50 foot cliff. For a film, not like he's not going to his doom. You set that up like, we gotta send him off a 50 foot cliff. Look, you and I are fixing to jump out of an airplane at 10,000 feet, so I think he can jump off a 50 foot cliff. It'll be fun. We're gonna take a baby chicken with us. So this is gonna be our skydiving chicken. Her name is Henrietta. We don't know if a chicken has skydived before, but we feel like this one deserves a skydive, so. Yeah, so this one's gonna be really cool. It looks like it's gonna be a silver wine dot. How do you know, Michael? Well, you see the little eyeliner? Look like it has eyeliner on it. And then that little streak on top of its head, that's classic silver wine dot baby chicken. Yeah, of course, of course. All we gotta do is just keep Dub from eating it. See, she's already learning. She's gonna be our falconry chicken. We are at the 2022 Wildlife Expo put on by the National Wildlife Control Operators Association. And we are in the pest block booth. And since no one is here, <laughs> I am going to give you a tour. They probably have okay. something useful going on. You're going to get all the thing. Trouble. What's really nice about this display is that you can really get close up. Like I can point right here and say, this is a fascia board. I can say, this is a metal drip edge. You know, I can show you exactly where the shingles are and how the shingles lay on top of the metal drip edge and how the drip edge fits onto the fascia board. It's really nice. I can show you a, a boxed out 
roof to soffit junction. I can show you a metal box out on a roof to soffit junction. Yeah, we get it. It's really, it's really a great display. The gable vent, heavily used attic access point for many different species of animals. Birds, bats, rats, squirrels, and raccoons. They all get inside an attic through this space. And almost every home has a gable vent. Some of them come in the shape of a triangle. Others come in the shape of this hexagon. Octagon. Or octagon. Come on. Two, it's a stop sign. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're right, it's an octagon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a heavy gauge metal that's perforated so that you get airflow. The reason people have a gable vent on a home in the first place is so the attic can breathe. If water vapors do build up in your attic, then you get a lot of mold and mildew in your, in your attic space. Also, in the summertime, when it gets to be 155 degrees in the attic space, it's able to cool itself off. This particular product, Pest Block product, is prefabricated, pre-cut, and then you can come in and you can install it over that, and it prevents animals from getting in. Now, if you're dealing with bats, what you would want to do is exclude all the bats first by putting a temporary mesh over this and a one-way valve and then after all the bats are gone you would come in and you would put this permanent solution in and they got this in different colors so you can color match color blend the house the next thing we can look at is another venting system and this is for your crawl space the space that's underneath a house and you want to vent this for the same reason but the opposite effects but you don't want animals living underneath there so again, they use this heavy grade metal that's perforated and it allows good airflow in and out, but the animals can't tear through this. Can you tell people why you're holding a T-Rex? So Terry the T-Rex is here to trigger traps. And Say that three times fast. And also point at things. And I use them to point at things. The next product that I'd like to point out, this is a gap that normally occurs when you have two different siding products. So this might be a brick, a masonry brick product that the house is built onto, and then they put siding over the top of it. Well, right there where the two connect, there's a gap. And that gap is big enough that mice can get underneath there and they start running inside your wall. Or if you have a bigger space, you can use this product that has a, uh, it's a torque mount on it so this right here is actually torquing against the siding so that nothing can get down and get down underneath it nothing can get up in it here like would this standardly come on a house no. like if i buy a house let me explain to you why this does not come with a house the purpose of this siding is to keep water out that's why a contractor puts the siding on the purpose of this masonry product is to keep water out that's why the, the contractor puts it in. So as it stands, it, ser it serves its purpose perfectly well by keeping water out of your house. But nobody thinks about animals. And that's why I have a job. <laughs> it's because nobody thinks about animals when they build the house. Homes are waterproofed and weatherproofed. And this whole, all of these pieces here, this is all called the building envelope. And so that envelope keeps the wood that the, the house is made from dry. And that's what it's, that's the purpose it serves. This roof to soffit junction here, it serves its purpose the way it's built. It keeps water out of the attic space. However, it does not keep Terry the T-Rex out. And that's why you have to come in and you have to block out the soffit area. This comes after the fact and usually after the animal's gotten into the house. Gutters are meant to move water off a roof. With this gutter guard not in place, this gutter serves that purpose. Put a gutter guard over the top of it. One, leaves and debris don't get into the gutter space. And two, animals can't get into this space and then get into the attic. This is representing a soffit vent. This soffit vent is up underneath here like this. And it allows the soffit to breathe. But this is what it's typically made out of when a home is built. It's just nothing more than mosquito netting. And so what happens is the animals are able to tear it. And so what we have to do is come in and install a permanent solution. And we'll come in and put pest block into the center of it. But it's solid so that the animals can't push it in or tear it out. 
This will keep raccoons out. This will keep squirrels out. This will keep bats out. This will keep little birds out. And usually after an animal has gotten in. Yeah, usually people aren't calling you to install all this stuff ahead of time, are they? No, there's not, not a lot of people want to spend money on preventative things. Sometimes an ounce of preventative is worth a pound of cure, as they say. Well, like what percentage of house fires are because of rodents? <clears throat> the way we have to say that is this. What percentage of attic fires are caused by rodents? And it's like 72% of attic fires are caused by, ro by rodents. That's a huge number. That's almost saying if you have squirrels in your attic and you don't do anything about it, you're inviting a fire because the percentage is that high. This is a full soffit vent right here where the whole soffit is vented. And then this on this side over here, if you turn the camera around and look this way, this is called strip venting where it's just a strip in the center of it. Again, when the homes are built, they just put mosquito netting in there. But it doesn't take long for little birds or squirrels or rats and mice to get in there and tear that out. What's well, one of the most damaged attics you've personally seen? I've seen attics damaged so badly that I just shook my head and walked away. Literally, the whole top, the roof, everything needed to be removed because it was that well, it was that damaged. And what animals are causing that type of damage? <clears throat> Normally raccoons. Raccoons are very, very destructive. Squirrels do a lot of damage. Mice and rats do some damage. Birds do a little damage, but raccoons destroy attics. They tear up wiring. They actually remove wiring. They can also damage uh, heating and air conditioning equipment that's inside the, the attic. They'll pull all the insulation down, pooping everywhere, and just completely contaminate and soil the damage. And then if something happens and a female raccoon gets locked out of the attic for some reason, the female raccoon will dig through the shingles and into the wood and then tear the whole attic open. Got a jig, man. This is like looking fancy. This is a roof vent. Uh, these are really well made, heavy duty, perforated so that they breathe really well. And then you screw them down into the rent. And this prevents squirrels, prevents raccoons from getting into that roof vent. Anyway, a lot of really good innovative products here at Pest Block. Not to mention, they can color coordinate a lot of this stuff. I mean, just look at the color palette right over here. Oh, I didn't even notice that. All these colors to blend in with your home. Which color is Rex? So T-Rex is right here, I think. Oh. Crimson red. Wow. We are a big supporter of Pest Block. New hey. Wildlife issues. The pork chops, I think. Yeah, pork chops. Pork chops. Yeah. We're yeah. having pork chops tonight, we, so nope. this is We're important. We're just going to grill up. We're going to fry up in a <laughs> Publix? Okay, so uh, Publix has a really good mustard potato salad. But, I, but for me, I can just eat pork chops and potato salad, and that's good for me. Same. Cole is saying the same. If it's yellow, it's got mustard in it. That's a sweet, sweet potato. A uh, sweet potato salad. I don't really care for that too much. I like, thing, I like potato salad that's tangy and tart. All right, bye. Love you. All right, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't know where we started. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are having wildlife issues, give us a call. We are certified pest block installers, and we can install preventative exclusion materials so that you don't have a wildlife issue in the first place. Nobody wants their attics torn to pieces by raccoons. No, I think I'll just wait till my whole entire roof is torn off. Yeah, why spend five or six hundred dollars? I'll just wait till I have to spend five thousand dollars. Can it be that inexpensive? I thought it would be way more than that. Nah, some some of this stuff, like if we were to do this right here, this is like a fifty dollar repair. Really? Yeah, so a fifty dollar repair versus a five thousand dollar repair, you do the math. We should have been talking about that the whole time. Right? I'm just looking at dollar signs when I'm looking at all this. This right here, thirty five dollar repair. Okay, yeah, definitely call us. Without a doubt, way cheaper than what's going to happen. And we're back. Hey, thanks for staying all the way through this video. If you're a homeowner in the St. Louis area, I am personally going to come out and do a 70 point wildlife inspection on your house complimentary. If you mention this video. And if you subscribe to this video, the channel. <laughs> Subscribe to just the video. If you're in one of our other markets, I'm gonna hook you up with one of our lead technicians. They're gonna come out and do a 70 point wildlife inspection on your home, complimentary. Like Chris so, Starr in Sacramento? Chris Starr in Sacramento, or Matthew in Reno, or Devin in Kansas City. Shout out to Brett in Little Rock. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, Brett and Little Rock. <laughs> Poor old Brett. You got you have five markets, Michael. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> No, wait, are we doing the whole thing <laughs> over it? I don't know. I just, uh, <laughs> you can just take whatever you want. It's at the end of the video. They're going to watch it no matter what now. Just the ones that will. They're just happy the video is still going. <laughs> uh, Cricket's doing really well. Hey, Cricket. She likes chicken, hip hop, dancing. She, she does like dance. the hip hop. Man, when she gets that, that head to bop, and she's like, it's just, just like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs>